let's dig into the labor rate analysis report. Now, there's a lot of information in this report, and so uh, we're going to step through it one step at a time. As with all the other reports, again, if we've got a department list at the top, it's whatever's highlighted at the top is the detail that we're going to see in the body of the report itself. And so in this particular case, I can take and choose each individual department. It'll pull up the data for that given department. We're going to take a look at a replacement department in this particular company. And just for simplicity's sake on the screen, I'm going to hide these departments once I have that set. We've got the hide department icon up here in the upper right-hand corner. All that does is it just collapses that, uh, that department section and brings the body of the, the report right here. So we're looking at just my retrofit department here in this particular company. Now, this report is really digging into what makes up my hourly rate. Right, if you ever had somebody in your company ask you, why do we have to charge so much? This is the report that's going to answer that question. And so we'll dig into this report and kind of un, uh, you know, unpeel it a little bit, unpack the information that's there. So again, remember, we're looking at just one department in this particular company. And so as we look at it, we start out at the top of this report in uh, total business overhead. So in this department, it's costing me $193,487 uh, to run this department. That's the total expenses, that's labor, that's all overhead allocated to this, truck uh, replacement costs, everything. It's costing me $193,000 plus to run this department. Now, I'm gonna sell some non-labor items, right? We're gonna bring some revenue in for that. So the first section here is, uh, you know, this is overhead, overhead absorbed by non-labor sales, right? In other words, what's revenue coming in that's not part of my labor rate. And so we had we sold some materials, right? And we actually, based on what we entered in, in this company, we sold $208,500 in materials uh, as we entered that in. Now, that's not all mine, right? I have to pay my suppliers for that. And so I'm gonna subtract out the less the cost of the materials. That was $139,000. So when I subtract the revenue minus what I gotta pay to my suppliers, there's still $69,500 in extra revenue in profit, in markup, that will go to offset overhead of my company. So that's the first one. Now, in my case, uh, we've also got some subcontractors in here. And so I had uh, $29,000 in, in subcontractors, but I've got to pay my subs, right? And so uh, uh, that, that's costing me $25,000. So when I subtract that out, uh, there's still $4,400 left that will offset overhead. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down on this report just a little bit more. All right, to, to bring me to some of the lower sections. Now, I also have in here, uh, in my case, I didn't have any other income. There's no diagnostic revenue. There's nothing like that in the company. So when I add up that extra money that's left over, the overhead absorbed by non-labor income, in other words, the overhead that's, that's being paid for by stuff other than my labor rate, is a grand total of $73,912. Well, when I subtract that from my total overhead, what it's costing me to run this company, uh, run this department, I still have remaining overhead that needs to be covered of $119,575. That needs to be covered by my labor rate. That's all that's left. And so if we take that $119,000 and we're going to bring it right down here, same number, $119,575. And I'll divide that by the number of billable hours that I've got in this department of my company. Again, it's all about the billable hours. That's what's got to pay for everything. So based on what I entered in for my team, I've got a grand total of 2,978.3 billable hours. So when I divide the $119,000 by that 2,900 plus billable hours, that gives me a labor overhead rate of $40.15 per hour. Now, the $40.15, that's the labor overhead. That's just the overhead expenses themselves. That doesn't count for wages, and it doesn't account for uh, a, prof a profit for the company or profit for the department. It's not in there, right? So $40.15 out of every hour that I bill out is going to go to cover my overhead expenses. So let me scroll down just a little bit farther on, on this report. And as I come down, we've got one more section. That $40.15, that overhead, I'm going to take and bring that number right down here. It's the exact same number, the overhead labor rate. These three items here, the first one, the average field labor way, uh, rate, all right, so $17.97. Based on what you entered in for your, your uh, uh, technicians who are allocated to this department, your average wage is $17.97. Right. Now, 
Uh, labor overhead rate, that came from above. That was uh, $40.15. And desired labor profit, $10.26. Right? So I can see that you know, we said in this particular department that we wanted to make a 15% net profit. That's what's driving that number. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out, I need to add all this stuff up, and my labor rate needs to be the hourly rate, $68.38 per hour is what I need to charge and, and build into my jobs for this uh, replacement department within my company. Now, as I look at this, there's two things that I want to point out. Number one, you know, I see this, uh, you know, companies or, or people that say, well, oh man, you know, the company is making so much money. Well, in this particular case, even with a 15% net profit here, the company is making $10.26 out of every hour. The technicians are making $17.97 an hour. They're making almost twice as much as what the company is making. Right? So again, it, it just kind of goes against or, or uh, explains that argument. Again, the company, even when we're set to a nice profitability, isn't necessarily making all that much extra money. That's the first point. Second point is, okay, I know what the 1797 is, that's wages. I know what the 1026 is, that's profit, but that middle chunk right there, that $40.15 is still a pretty big number. What makes up that number? We can go a step farther, right? So I'm gonna scroll back up to the top of this report, and you notice we've got two tabs up here. In blue is the labor overhead rate. That's what we're looking at here. We've got another tab right here, the labor rate breakdown. What that will do is that will dig into that $40.15 per hour and show you to the penny what makes up your hourly rate. And so we start out with all of our variable expenses here. I can see the annual expense allocated to this department. This tells me that down here on the end, the overhead per direct labor hour, 50, uh, 50 cents out of every hour I bill this year in this department is gonna go to pay for the cost of my using credit cards. Uh, we've got fuel for the trucks. $3.17 out of every hour I bill out is gonna go, go to put fuel in the trucks. Right? We got, uh, uh, again, we got a second fuel expense in there as well. Job-related costs that we have, that's 34 cents out of every hour that we bill out. If I scroll down a little bit farther in this report, you can now see the fixed overhead expenses that are there, right? And so in this particular case, we've got the owner of the company, Patrick Magoo here is, it is a significant chunk of his wages are in this department, so that's $19 out of every hour billed out here is gonna to go to pay his wages. But then every other expense, right? Uh, uh, Peggy is in there, uh, Peggy Magoo. We've got repair and maintenance, right? So I look at that, uh, 54 cents out of every hour goes for repair and maintenance uh, in the, in the, uh, the building itself. Uh, $1 per hour goes for advertising. 12 cents goes toward charitable donations. A dollar three goes toward uh, the, the, the life insurance uh, uh, policy that we have out there. And so again, we show you to the penny what makes up that hourly rate. Now, one of the things that I've always said, right, your two greatest expenses are typically your equipment replacement costs, the cost of replacing your trucks, and non-billable direct labor. All right, so the time that I gotta pay my field guys for that I can't bill somebody for. If I go down on this, this list, the only exception to that is like we have here, the owner is putting a significant portion of his wages on this department. Outside of that one, if you look at these dollars per hour and what we're spending, there we got a dollar, right? We got a dollar up here, right? All those are less than a dollar. Let's scroll down a little bit farther on that list. Right, as I do that, I can see we're still under a dollar eighty cents. Right there, we got a dollar six is for the phone bill and the cell phones. I got two dollars and twelve cents on payroll taxes on indirect labor. Right, but then we go down a little bit farther. Six dollars and sixteen cents is my equipment replacement fund. So out of every hour we bill out, six dollars and sixteen cents is going to build that fund to replace my trucks when they die. And then the highest expense in there is this one right here, unbilled direct labor. So in this department, $12.37 out of every hour I bill out is going to pay the wages for the, the, the installers that I can't bill somebody for. The two highest numbers that are in there. You will typically see that in every case. And then we get to the bottom. It gives us total uh, uh, field uh, fixed expenses, total overhead costs on the bottom. I'll scroll down just a little bit farther here. Total overhead costs combined are $64.97. Right, the portion of that that's covered by non-labor income, the material markup and uh, the, the uh, subcontractor revenue, uh, that's covering $24.82 out of every hour I build out in terms of overhead. 
And so we come down to that bottom number of $40.15 is the remaining part that has to be covered by my labor. Again, as I go through and look at this individual report, um, I can show my departments, simply click on another department. It will update all of my numbers accordingly and now show me the detail for that next department. So again, very good report to answer that question. Why do you need to charge what you need to? And it shows you what makes up that hourly rate to the penny. If you have any questions in regards to the labor rate analysis report, feel free to give us a call at Grandine Associates.